Who's sleepy? Anyone hungry? I was meant to do this after lunch so that I could get you to sleep, but I don't think I'm going to get you to sleep before lunch. So here's the first thing which we're going to do. I want everyone to stand up, please. Everyone, please stand up. Stand up. I would request everyone to stand up. Great. Everyone requires to stand up. Even the actual faculty, even the people who organize the event, excellent. Thank you very much. So here's the first thing which we're going to do. I need you to listen to me. Yeah? Everyone's listening? Great. I want you to take your right hand. Actually, before you do take your hand, I just want you to shake your arms. Shake your legs. Excellent. If you want to hit the person next to you, you can do that. But that's your call. Here's the next thing which we're going to do. Very, very simple. I trust everyone has a right hand in this room. If you don't have a right hand, you use your left hand. So here's your right hand. I'm just going to show you this is my right hand, not magic, but this is my right hand, not my left hand. Yeah, everyone, right hand in the air. You want to hit someone? Please do. Okay. Right hand. I want you to take your thumb and your index finger. Yeah. Index finger. I knew you about two, three years ago. This is what they call the index finger. Before that, I used to just call that pointy finger. That's what I used to call it. So that's the index finger. Now, listen to me. Are you ready? I want you to take this. I want you to take this and I want you to put it on your chin, please. On your chin, please. Where's your chin? Where's your chin? Your chin's over here. Chin's over here. Let's sit down. This exercise is... Uh, Men, you will be disappointed, but this is the truth. Women do listen more than men. Mostly, the women do tend to go to the chin. In some cases, it doesn't happen, but it's okay. They're not talking to the partner, so it's okay. <laughs> now, what did I just do with you? Anyone? Anyone got a mic? Can I have a mic? Okay, so let's see. I disrupted your thinking. Yeah? Anyone else wants to share what, what just happened? There was a bit of misdirection because you pointed to the chief. I did a bit of misdirection. Yeah, misdirection. Okay. Anyone else wants to add the two take? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Time is a precious gift. And you've taken the time to come over here and come to this event. So Applause for all of you. Please give yourself a round. And pat yourself as well if you feel like that. And if you want, you can pat the person next to you as well. So thank you so much for being here. What happens is, I mean, I am not from a hospitality background. Just to clarify, I'm not from a hospitality background. I'm from a technical background and I fell into looking at how to assist people to perform better in whatever they want to do. So if someone asks me what do you do, I tend to say I inspire people to do what they want to do. But here's a challenge with anything which we do. Anything which we do. And the challenge is there is a conflict between the brain and the beautiful heart. There's a conflict between the brain and the beautiful heart. And our education system, the way we do our work, the way we live day to day, today, is a lot of focus on the brain. Very important, extremely important. The brain is very crucial. Extremely crucial. So question to everyone. How many brains do we have? How many brains do you have? We have. Anyone wants to answer that? Okay. Let's take the mic. Who wants to answer that? How many brains do you have? Just a guess. Guess what? One. So we've got one over there. Anyone else? Two. 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 Three. Four. Four. Five. <laughs> six. Okay. Now, here's a very interesting thing which came out many, many years ago called the triune brain theory. Triune brain theory. It talked about we having three major parts 
in the brain. Yes, there are other parts as well, but these are the three major parts. The first one, the first one being the left and the right brain, that is considered the one brain, but two parts. So that is what they call the neocortex. Anyone watched Matrix? Hands up who's watched Matrix. My understanding is the name Neo came from the neocortex. The second part is the limbic brain. The limbic brain, or the animal brain, is emotions. All your emotions, your good, your bad, your negative, your happy, your sad. All your emotions. And then you have the reptile brain. Question to everyone. When you think about a reptile, what comes into your mind? Instinct. Instinct comes to your mind. Now, what does the reptile brain do? At the moment, you're breathing, you're heart working, you're thinking, whatever's happening, the survival mode in you is being controlled by the reptile brain. And without this, we are unable to function. So all three parts of our brain are required. Here's the problem. The reptile brain is the only part of the brain which is connected to the spinal cord. Thus it becomes the gatekeeper. And you may have these beautiful, intelligent ways of doing things, but if the reptile brain doesn't like it, guess what? It's going to sabotage it. This is where your beliefs and your values come into play. Now on the other hand, you've got the heart. Who thinks from the heart for the day? Anyone? Okay, one, two, only two people think from the heart. Okay, who's fallen in love? Hey, anyone who's fallen in love, come on. No one's fallen in love? No one's fallen in love? Fallen in love with your pet? With your sofa? Yeah? With your partner? With your work? Oh, what somebody said, uh, to work? <laughs> this is where the heart, people usually think the heart is purely emotional based. To a certain extent, yes it is. But this is where the secret lies, is what's happening in the heart. So there's an organization called Heart Math Institute. They talk about heart intelligence. So for those people who are very intellectual based, please check on Heart Math Institute and they talk about heart intelligence. Here's the beauty about the heart. When we look at the brain, we, we, our body has aura or EMF or let, we've got certain energy field around ourselves. So the brain has an energy field around us, uh, ourselves which is about about four meter wide, all across like a spin. The heart, the heart goes from four to eight meters. Now, the amazing thing about the heart is it has the ability to expand its energy field infinity times. But the brain just still stays there. I've heard people say this a lot of times. They say, they go into a room or they're walking somewhere and they feel someone's presence. And they look around. They look around and there's no one there. Guess what? Your heart energy field has just come into someone else's heart energy field. Heartless Mass Institute has actually done a lot of research and discover that. Heart Mass Institute, if you go to their website, they're scientists who focus on how the heart has its own brain. So it's about connecting this brain and this brain together and integrating it. It's all about integrating it. If you want to perform, if you really want to perform, it doesn't matter what business you are, what level in your organization you are, what business you're running, 
you need to get these two integrated. These two need to be integrated. So we're going to do a ver another exercise now. And into, in order to integrate this, we need to relax. Not numb ourselves, but relax. So here's another exercise which we're going to do. And this is what I call the 30 seconds exercise. Is everyone ready for this? Yes. I would like your feet flat on the ground. Flat on the ground. So no slouching back. Straight. Sit up straight. Put your hands on the palm. Yeah? If your next door neighbor is not doing that, slap them one and tell them to do, do that, please. Here's what you're going to do next. So listen to my instructions. In a while, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. In a while, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I would like you to close your eyes for 30 seconds only. Only when I say close your eyes now, then that's what you do. So I'll ask you to close your eyes, and I want you to close it for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. When you believe your 30 seconds are over, when you believe your 30 seconds are over, please open your eyes. Bear in mind, you are not going to use any mobiles, alarms, watches to know what that 30 seconds is. You use your own body clock to stop at the 30 seconds. Are we all ready? Hmm? I will wake you up for lunch. I'm going to say, I won't get you up for the way as well. Just bear with me one minute. Just in your way. Okay, so is everyone ready? Your 30. Can you hold on? Oh, I'm not going to go by the way you think you're with me. And your 30 second starts. Now, close your eyes. For those who have not opened your eyes, please could you open them now? <laughs> you, know, you were having a good snooze, it was really good, but... Now, just to let you know, the first person's 30 seconds were actually 15 seconds. Then as I was running around the room, quickly observing, the next one to 20, 21, 22, barely anyone went to 30 seconds. And some of us decided to go Oh, we're over 30 seconds. <laughs> yes? We saw that. Maybe they were actually sleeping. So I'm just hoping you relax. What happened? How come one person's 30 seconds was 15 seconds, one was 22, one was actually 30 itself, another person was way more than 30 seconds? What happened? What happened? Who wants to answer me that question? Can you say that? Different perceptions of time. Different perceptions of time. And guess what? I read your mind. Perception. Perception. Everyone has a different perception. And it's very important for us when we're working on a day to day basis, be it in our life or at work, to be aware of our perception and that other person's perception. We all are coming on the stage and giving our own unique story. It could be based on data. It could be based on gut feeling. It could be based on experience. But we are giving our own unique story. This is our perception. 
And as individuals, it doesn't matter how old, how young, what profession you're in, you need to be aware of people's perception. Awareness is very important. Amplify your awareness to be aware that people have different perception. And because of these perceptions, not necessarily you will get the performance you want from other people and from yourself. You may be doing the right processes, but something is not working. And this is where the heart matters. Is how are you connecting to the heart or are you just using your intelligence? So you have to integrate both of them. Now, there's some things which you need to be aware of day to day when it comes to a communication. And communication is what we do on, on a regular basis. There's communication happening internally, which is a very, very long process. For those who are in marketing, they are aware of something called the black box. So all that hidden over there. So I'm going to talk about something about external communication over there. We're going to look at certain words which come up on a regular basis in our language, which can actually somewhat damage the communication which we're doing with another person. Are we ready for this? Here's the first word. Again, who's married or is in a relationship? Hands up, please. Uh, all the ladies, could you put your hands down? And all the men who are married or in a partnership, please lift your. All the men, keep your hands up. <laughs> ladies, you can put your hands down. Okay, men, please listen to this. Are we ready? You, your wife buys a beautiful dress. You can put your hands down. This is for the men. Why she buys a beautiful dress, or your partner buys a beautiful dress, or she gets her hair done. She comes and she meets you and she says, darling, how do I look? Okay. Just have you do notice, my boy. <laughs> and you say, you look great, but... You will never get past the but. What happens when the word but is used? You run out of the room. <laughs> you run out of the room. Okay, ladies, what goes into your mind when your man says to you, but? You want to smack him. Okay, smack him. You're sleeping in the garden. Okay, no food for you today. What does but do to a conversation? What does it do? It deflates the moment. That's very well thought. It deflates the moment. The but literally, literally deletes anything which has been said before. You look beautiful, but. You look gorgeous, but. Because we've been programmed after the but, you tend to say something negative. And automatically, our brain is saying, okay, what is this person going to say next to me? What is it that is going to come? And it's going to be something negative. If you do wish to use the word but, please put something positive after it. <laughs> or just eliminate it completely, put a full stop. Or instead of the but, Use an and. Delete the but. I don't mean that but. I mean A and D. And put the and over there. Okay. So you put the and over there. Simple as that. Day to day communication. Check your emails out. Check your emails out. And you may just be enlightened how many times you're using the word but. For those people who are using the word however, News for you, it's a gentle way to say but. <laughs> let's, let's just get rid of that word. Here's another word which tends to be used on a regular basis. Who's in sales over here? Okay, so a lot of people in sales. So sales people may be able to pick this up much quicker. 
Who drives over here? Ever taken your car close to the service center? You go to the service center, or for those who've got electronic items, you take your electronic item or you take your car to the service center and then you ask the representative, will I receive it at this time? So let's say you take your car in and you say, will I receive my car by five o'clock this evening? And the representative says, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. What happens as soon as the word try is used? Down again. Takes it down again. So if you are using the word I'll try, you are actually bringing the conversation from here to here. So if you're in a sales conversation or even in a regular, regular conversation, and we use that word try, automatically the whole energy of the conversation is going to go down. Words are very, very powerful. I'm going to look at another word. Another word, and it is the word why. Most of us use that on a regular basis. It's like the but, the try, and the why is used on a regular basis. When you look at the word why, it's a very powerful word. Very powerful word. Again, going to all the people, all the men, focusing on the men, then it's much easier to comprehend how this word works. <laughs> you come home, and you're late. And your partner says, why are you late? Men, what happens? Panic. Panic. <laughs> <laughs> What's my excuse today? Uh, I don't know, the boss gave me too much work. Something comes into your mind. Panic. The thin smoke comes up. The gloves are out. Or you want to hide somewhere. The why is very dangerous because what the why literally does is it takes you back. It takes you back. And the why is connected just not to that moment. The why is connected to many other moments happening in your life. Microsecond, literally microsecond, and you are in separate emotional states rather than just one emotional state. When you are having a conversation with someone. The why is very crucial to troubleshoot an issue. Or what Simon Sinek says is the why is very important to find that purpose which you have in life. So that's why you go back, you look at, you go into your values and your beliefs. On a day-to-day -day basis, you have to be very careful how you use it. Instead of using the why and you're looking for that solution, how about using the word what, how? What, how takes you forward? It finds a solution for you. The why just takes it further back. For those who have got kids, or nephews or nieces, have you been in that phase when they go to the why phase? Yeah. It's a beautiful phase where you want to just, <laughs> but you want to do that because you're good people. So you have to be aware of some of these words which we use on a regular basis. Unfortunately, we've been programmed. I'm just here to amplify that awareness that let's look at these words a bit carefully. Every word which we use has a certain amount of energy associated to it. Either it will lift your energy, or what scientists say, lift your vibration, or it will decrease your vibration. So when you look at someone who's feeling low, depressed, in science terminology, it means their vibration is low. Someone who's energetic, moving, their vibration is high. Now, how much time do you have? Okay, about 10 minutes. I'm going to do very little exercise to actually increase your vibration. Is everyone ready for this one? You can't use your laptops, you can't use your mobiles, you can't Why? use your Apple phones. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, 
This I will need a volunteer for this just to show the impact of this. What's happening? We'll try. Uh, <laughs> who wants to be a volunteer? I would prefer a female to show this. Not that I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm hitting on someone. It's just I just want a female just to show this. Is, and a man can come as well if they want to come as well. Okay, so if you could come, please up, sit up over here. I would like you to now please go to your lips, please, to your lips. I would like you to go to the center of your throat, please, to the center of your throat, please. Now, I would like you to please go into your heart, please, into your heart.
Stay in your arm. With your eyes closed, just wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. With your eyes closed, put your palms on your eyes. Open your eyes, blink a couple of times. Open your eyes and remove your palms.
working together. You're in balance now. And this allows you to manage a situation much better when you're in that state. So give this a go before you go into a meeting or even at a meeting. It, it will make a big difference in how you manage a situation. Instant integration of the brain and the heart, awareness, consciousness, and energy all working together. Questions? Any questions? No questions? Thank you very much. These are my contact details. If you want to have to contact me, you can contact me there. I'm going to be here for a while. I really appreciate it. Could everyone give themselves an applause for the great job? And thank you as well for doing a great job as well. We're doing a great job.